Hello and welcome back to another Let's Learn Kerbal Space program. My name is Silverlink and I will be your guide for this episode. Uh, today we're going to dive in and we're going to head to the Mun. It's uh, an exciting one. This is a big one. This is the first real sort of beginner challenge. Uh, and it's it's not, you know, it's not super easy when you're first doing it, but eventually as you build up your confidence and do it more and more, uh, it becomes pretty trivial, in fact. It's definitely not too bad to go to the moon. We're not going to be landing on it today. We're just going to be getting into orbit and then returning back to Kerbin. It should be good to get you guys going and give you enough information that you can start doing these missions on your own. So let's start by taking a look at mission control. Here we go, our primary mission is Moon or Bust. Time to visit our nearest neighbor, the Mun. Establish an orbit around the Mun with an apoapsis less than 2400 and a periapsis greater than 60 kilometers. So we have quite a bit of a range here. We just need to get between 60 and 2400 kilometers, which shouldn't be too difficult for us, even for your first time. Uh, we're gonna get 150 signs for this, which will be perfect. We're also gonna complete going green. Uh, if you guys will remember, we ran into a bug last time where this completed, despite us not having a science junior equipped on anything. So we are going to complete that one today anyways. We're gonna try it out. So let's head on over to the VAB and we'll start building our rocket. All right, here we go. We're gonna start the same as always uh, from our last stage up, which is gonna be a Mark I tin can. And we're also gonna strap our parachute onto it so that it can return home safely. Now, since we upgraded it, or since we took it last time, we're gonna put on a heat shield, uh, which you'll find under the thermal tab. We picked that up at the, at the end of, or at our second mission last time. So we're going to strap a heat shield on. This is going to take most of the heat for our return back to Kerbin. And that way we won't blow up on re-entry. Now underneath the heat shield, we're going to put a decoupler. So that way we can return home with just our pod. And this time we're going to strap on a Science Junior. This Science Junior Environment Survey. Right underneath here. This is going to get us some additional experiments that we can run. Uh, both around Kerbin and in space so that we can gain a little bit more science uh, and unlock more parts So underneath here, we're gonna build our upper stage This is what's going to get us to the Mun and home again So we're gonna take a look at our fuel tanks. We're gonna grab the FLT 400 We're gonna strap that on here and we're gonna go back to our trusty Terrier engine. Now this is the engine that's most effective, uh, at least out of the engines that we have right now, this is the most effective in space. It's not effective in atmosphere. You can tell that by the ISP values. It's essentially the efficiency of the engine, both at one atmosphere, which is on Kerbin, and in a vacuum, which is in space. So this is our most effective engine at 335 ISP. And so we'll strap that on here. And this is going to be our last stage. This is going to get us, or second to last stage, I should say. This is going to get us home to Kerbin. It's going to get us to the moon. And we should have a fair bit of fuel left over. So after this, we're going to create another stage. We're going to do that with another decoupler that we're going to strap on underneath here. And this time we're going to use a lot of fuel. We're going to take these FLT-800s and we're going to strap on four of them. Now this is going to give us lots of fuel. You can do this with three, but if you want some additional fuel, this is probably uh, the way to, to, to go. It'll just give you a bit more of a buffer room. And if you guys can guess which engine we're going to put on, that's right, it's the swivel engine. Our trusty swivel, which gives us the gimbling so that we can control our rocket in space. Now, this is, this is going to be our main stages of the rocket. However, there's a problem, and we can see what that problem is by clicking on Engineer's Report in our bottom right-hand panel. The engine, uh, Engineer's Report gives us some information about the launch. Uh, in this case, our thrust-to-weight ratio is less than 1.0. The vessel will not leave the launch pad. And you can see that right down here. Our thrust-to-weight is 0.599. We want this to be above 1.0 in order to take off. So we're going to need to add some additional thrust. And just to show that, let's go ahead and launch this. Here we go on the launch pad. And you'll see we have our engines fully thrusted. We're going to hit space. We're going to skip the cool down here. And it doesn't take off. It stays on the rocket pad. We don't have enough thrust in order to actually lift off 
and get our rocket moving. So let's go ahead and revert to the VAB. And we can see that in the engineer's report as well, which, which tells us whether there's a problem with our spacecraft. For example, if we had not put our parachute on there, it would tell us that the command pod doesn't have a parachute. It might crash upon re-entry returning home. So you might want to put a parachute on. So it gives you a lot of basic helpful information like that. So we're going to need some additional thrust. The easiest way to add thrust is through solid rocket boosters. Now, so far we've been using standard Methalox fuel tanks and we've been using these Methalox engines. Uh, these give us control over, uh, these are known as liquid engine cores. So there, it's a liquid inside that's getting burned off uh, mixed with a, an oxygen mixture. I'm trying to keep this like really simple because I'm not a space expert, even though I love it. Uh, and so I might get some of these wrong, some of these things wrong technically, but it should be enough for a lay person to understand. Uh, so these are liquid core engines, but we also have these solid fuel boosters. Now, solid fuel boosters give us a massive punch off the get go, but we don't have any control over them. We don't have any vectoring. We don't have any control over the fuel ratio. They just burn at 100% until they're depleted, but they give us a huge boost. They give us a huge boost for us to, to sort of get launched off. So they're going to give us 250 kilonewtons of thrust at one atmosphere. And so if we strap two of them on there, that should give us enough to, to get vertical and to get up into the air. So let's go ahead and strap a couple of them on. We're going to put on a decoupler, but this time we're going to use our radial decouplers. Now these let us decouple things from the side of the rocket. Um, rather than uh, separated vertical stacks. So we're gonna go to the side of our rocket. We're gonna hit the X key to turn on symmetry mode and we're gonna get a two times symmetry. And we're going to place our decouplers right around here. We're probably going to fiddle around with them in a little bit, we'll move them around, but that's a good place to start, sort of just above our last fuel tank. Now we're gonna go back to our engines and we're gonna grab this thumper, solid fuel booster, and we're going to attach those to our decouplers. Okay, so when you're done, it should look like this from the front side. Now the last thing we want is some aerodynamics and we're gonna put on some nose cones onto these so that they can move through the air a little bit smoother, reduce our drag and help get us a little bit further, uh, a little bit further faster. So next we're gonna, we're gonna rotate and translate, which is in our bottom middle panel here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to click on our decoupler and we're gonna move it down just a little bit. I'm gonna move it to the top of our fourth fuel tank. And then I'm going to click on our actual solid booster. And I'm gonna move this down just so that our engines are just below, just below our swivel engine. Not much, just sort of a, a couple of ticks below. And your rocket should look something like this. Pretty simple rocket. Now let's check our staging. Now we want everything to burn off the get-go. Right now, only our solid fuel boosters are, are doing that. So we're gonna grab our swivel engine and we're gonna move that down into stage one as well. And now in stage one, all three of our bottom engines are firing. Then once our solid fuel boosters run out, we want our radial decouplers to trigger, so that way they will get launched off to the side. Uh, then we will use our next decoupler, which will get us to our final rocket stage. Uh, and this will decouple the bulk of our engine stacks for our main swivel engine. And that looks correct. And then we're gonna fire our terrier engine, which is gonna be up here and we'll decouple our terrier engine and our science vessel in order to come home with our pod and we'll parachute down to Kerbin. Perfect, so let's take a look here. Uh, we have 5579 meters per second of Delta V. Let's check our trip planner. And we're gonna go to the MUN. And we're gonna see for a one-way trip, we need 3400 to get into orbit. We need 860 to get into the moon intercept. 
We need another 280 to get into the low lunar orbit. Now, we're not going to the moon's surface, so we don't need this 500 here. So that means this is really closer to, you know, 50, 51, 20 minus 500, 46. 100 uh, delta V, which is all we really need. But we are going to need some to get home. So we're going to need another moon intercept. So it's going to be plus an 800, another 860, uh, which should give us enough fuel anyways, because we can, from our moon intercept um, back into Kerbin, we can... We don't need to get back into orbit and land or anything like that. We can use the atmosphere to slow us down and to pull us back into the planet. So this should be enough fuel. If we do some rough math here, this should be enough. So let's get rid of our engineer's report and let's go ahead and get launched. All right, here we are. Let's hit space to launch. Go through our countdown. Now, if you guys are on nighttime, you can speed ahead to make it daytime before you launch. It'll make your life a little bit easier. We're going to follow our same launch parameters here. Here we go. And you can see our thrust to weight ratio gets us taken off here. So between five and 1500 meters, we're going to start our gravity turn. We're going to get about to the 95 degree marker. And then at the 10 kilometer mark, we want to be around 45 degrees. So we're going to start turning a little bit more here. And we can see our apple, time to apoapsis is going up, which is what we want. I need to tilt a little bit more. Okay, and we'll decouple our solid fuel boosters. And now we're back left with our main engine here. And I am way too high, so I'm going to go a little bit more sideways. And our next marker is going to be at 25 kilometers, and we want to be about 30 degrees. My time to apoapsis is dropping, so I'm going to point a little bit more towards my, retro my prograde marker. going to tilt up a little bit because it's still going down. We've still got about half our fuel tank here, so we've got lots of fuel. All right, and we're going up here again. We want we want that around 50 seconds, so we're definitely a little bit low. So I'm just going to keep on this trajectory here. I can come down a little bit. And now I want my apoapsis to get up above 70, 70 kilometers. We're at 45, so we're going to keep going here. And we always want to be burning as close to our prograde marker as we can. That's just the most efficient path that we can take. All right, we're up over 50 seconds. So I'm going to start point pointing a little bit more directly to the prograde marker and slightly over the horizon. 55 kilometers. So we've still got about 20 to go. 60K. Our time to apoapsis doesn't matter too much now. All right, we're 75K, so I'm going to cut my engines. We're going to pop on over here, and we are going to create a maneuver node at our apoapsis. And we're going to do that by clicking on the blue line and then selecting create a maneuver plan. That's going to create one of these circles on here, which we can click on to move around. Get that right on our apoapsis. And we're going to burn prograde. We're going to add fuel in the direction that we're heading in order to circularize our orbit. So we're going to pull out our prograde marker. And we're going to go until our apoapsis and our periapsis shift like that. You can see our periapsis is 76K. Our apoapsis is 84. And it's going to take 152 delta V out of the 647 we have left. It's going to be a seven second burn. And we're going to do it in about three minutes. So... Let's head on back. 
we're going to click our target maneuver marker so that we can start pointing in the right direction. Now, when our maneuver node lines up with our prograde marker, that tells me our target is, is right about where I want it to be. So we'll be able to start firing. But again, that's going to be in a couple of minutes. So let's speed time ahead here. Not much to see while it's nighttime, unfortunately. It gets a little dark and tough to tell what's going on. But you get a nice view of the stars. All right, we're down to a minute and a half. And we're going to get this down to uh, about 15 seconds, and then we'll bring it down to 1x. We've got a minute left. All right, 10 seconds. There we go. We're just about lined up here. So we can start burning any time around now. I'm going to switch to my map view just so that I can see my line move out. And that I can track my periapsis and my apoapsis. They swapped around. Perfect. 76 and 91. That's a good orbit right there. We've now made it to orbit, guys. We have a stable one. So we're going to F5 here. We're going to save our game because that means if something goes wrong or we run into a bug, we don't have to start everything from scratch. We can just do a quick load right from this point where we got into orbit. Now we're going to move on to getting our moon intercept. We can delete our maneuver node here. And you can see the moon on the map. Right now, mine is towards the right-hand side. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to target the moon. And that's going to give us some more information about it uh, as, as we get closer um, and as we build out our maneuver nodes. So the trick with getting a moon intercept is you want the moon to be directly to the right of Kerbin. Okay, and then we're going to fire straight up, 90 degrees. So we'll get to the back of the planet. We're going to create a maneuver plan. We're going to pull out our prograde marker until we reach the moon intercept. There we go. And you can see... Now, in our moon's area here, our target line is going through here, and we have a moon periapsis. So right now, that periapsis is 498.831. I'm going to right-click it in order to lock it into place, and I'm just going to pull the prograde marker just a little bit, and we're going to keep this dropping down. We need to get within 120 kilometers, so 120,000 is going to be our apoapsis. So I'm going to get this down as close as I can without kind of getting into its major orbit here or without getting pulled into the planet. 206, 96, perfect. So that's within 120, that's gonna be our target. Uh, and you can see our, our full sort of burn trajectory. Now, what we're gonna do is once we reach this periapsis, we're gonna burn again in order to pull this line further in and get caught in the moon's gravity and we'll get into a moon or orbit. So that's the plan. Uh, that's the plan, but we can't do that until we get into the moon's sphere of influence. Basically, this bubble that's around the moon that you can see that has uh, these blue lines, these identify the moon's sphere of influence. So this is where we are being affected by the moon's gravity uh, and where essentially the game has loaded the moon up for us. That's basically what it is. But we have our flight pan plan in place. We're going to be burning in 27 minutes. We're going to have a 51 second burn. This is going to take 853 Delta V. We have 488 left. So this is going to take us into our last terrier stage, which is fine. Uh, this is what we planned for. This is what we expected. So let's speed time ahead. Actually, what we're going to do is... So let's warp to our maneuver plan. And that's going to give us that 30 second marker. Where we can get lined up with our target. A nice stable orbit here. All right, we're going to click on our maneuver node. We're going to get lined up with our trajectory. 
and in 30 seconds we're gonna burn and we're gonna get this nice and funky orbit if we had just left everything going but uh, we're not going to so that's the trick with the moon get it like get a top-down view get the moon oops get the moon pointed to the right hand side of you and then fire 90 degrees away fire straight up at that 90 degree marker and that should get you a mooner encounter now you may need to shift the nav the, not the nav ball you might oh it's time to burn chat all right we're gonna burn here so you might have to move the maneuver node around a little bit but this is the rough marker that you want to get to is is you want that 90 degree lineup and that's going to get you what's called the encounter with the moon where we enter its sphere of influence so we're about to run out of fuel here so we're getting ready to decouple there we go we'll decouple we'll fire up our terrier engine and we've got over 1500 meters per second in delta v which should be enough to get us to the moon and get us home so we're gonna let our line push out and what we're gonna do is once our line gets into the moon sphere of influence we're gonna kill our engines by hitting the x key on the keyboard and we're gonna just do some fine adjustments so i'm gonna slow down here because we're getting close there we go and I'm cut my engines so right now our periapsis is 459 I right clicked on the moon PE uh, for our actual trajectory in order to get lined up here and then I'm just gonna do small burns And I want to get within 120k there we go that gets us to 88 kilometers so that should be pretty good because we need to get between 60 and 120 so 88 seems like a pretty good marker so we're going to delete our maneuver node and now you can see our actual orbital flight plan which is going to send us to the moon we're going to start getting pulled into it normally we would just circle around and get thrown out into a big loop here and that would be our orbit around Kerbin but we're going to create a maneuver node at our moon's periapsis uh, in order to circularize our orbit. So let's F5 to get another quick save because we just got in our most important burn here. And let's head back and take a look at our little craft here. There's our debris that's gonna burn up into the atmosphere hopefully. We've already made our burn, so at this point we can skip time ahead. And you can see Kerbin falling away behind us as we start making our way to the moon. Now I'm going to watch this from map view because I want to see when I enter the moon's sphere of influence. So I'm going to play with the time speed up and slow down. Again, as we get close... Uh, we just go a little bit slower because we don't want to overshoot if you overshoot you can just hit f8 to reload that last save that we did And try it again So here it comes we're about to enter the moon's sphere of influence. Oh, but before we do that We're in deep space here, and we have some science that we can run we have some science that we can run because we have entered Kerbin, uh, a, a Kerbin high atmosphere. And we can also do an EVA. So we're going to get our ship pointed directly up. We're going to line our cameras up here. We're going to close this and we're going to F5 again. And we're going to get Bill Kerman out. Oh, he, he grabbed upside down. That's all right. We're going to hit space to let go, and we're going to turn on our RCS thrusters just in case we float away. We're going to right click and have him run a crew observation. He's going to do his little floaty spinny around thing. All right, we already have this experiment in storage, but that's okay. So we're going to close these out. We're going to hit F to grab back onto the ship and beat aboard. And now, let's go ahead and enter the moon's sphere of influence. 
So there we go. We've crossed the line. We're now in the moon's sphere of influence. We're going to create a maneuver node at the moon's periapsis. And we're going to burn retrograde. And this is going to pull our orbit inwards. And we're going to gradually get it into a circle around the moon. So retrograde, again, is the, is the one with the X. We're just going to pull this out nice and slow. You can see it curving in, and there we go. We now have, have it curved in here. So I'm going to right-click the apoapsis and the periapsis. And we want to get within 120 kilometers and 60 kilometers. So it would be nice if we could aim for 80k again. We're just going to pull this nice and slow, nice and steady. And we've got lots of time. We've got an hour before we need to burn. So you've got lots of chances to get this right and to practice it. 300k... All right, have these flip around. There we go. 89K and 70K. That puts us within, within range on what we need here. It's exactly what we're looking to do. So, let's head back. We're going to get lined up with our target once again by clicking the target icon in the SAS control. That's going to get us lined up with where we need to be. There's Kerbin. We should be able to see the moon somewhere around here. There, there it is. Moon's down, downwards from us right now. So let's speed time ahead. Actually, let's warp to our maneuver node. Okay, we're going to make sure we're lined up with our target. And we're going to watch our map screen. going to watch our map screen so that we can see our planned trajectory. We've got 20 seconds to burn. Now, we're close enough to the periapsis that we can start our burn now. So I'm going to I'm going to go max burn here. And you can see our actual line is coming in. It's getting pulled in. We've circularized, and there we go. We've completed our mission. Now, let's let's still get this a little bit closer like we wanted. I don't and we're just going to burn nice and slow. This way we can get a nice orbit of the moon. And we also have some more science to run, but we'll get our orbit circularized before we run it. We'll let this burn. There we go. And now we have a nice circular orbit around the moon. So once again, we're going to get lined up towards the top. We're on the dark side right now, so we can't see much, but we've done this before. We're going to F5 to save our game. We're going to EVA. And we're going to run some science. We're going to run a crew report. Gonna let go, run our science. Perfect. Grab back onto the ship and we're gonna board. And that's it, we're nice and circularized. We can let this run here. And enjoy our orbit. We'll bring our way around to the light side. There's the moon underneath us. Pretty soon, guys, we're going to land on it. But for now, we've completed our mission. So let's... How do we get home now? So getting home is pretty easy. What you want to do is... Uh, on the closest point between the moon and the planet Earth, which for us is close to our apoapsis right now, uh, we're going to click to create a maneuver plan. And we're just going to burn prograde. Eventually we're getting flung off and you can see we're orbiting Kerbin again. So if we right click our periapsis and we continue 
uh, burning prograde here, or planning to burn prograde. We want to see if we can get this within 35, or to about 35 kilometers. Then that will catch us into the atmosphere and we'll come on in for a landing. So we're at 1200, 1110, 8, 7, 6. Now, I will say, if you came into the moon from the other direction, which does happen sometimes, then you want to burn from the furthest point away. Essentially, it's when you want to burn at the retrograde part of your orbit. So we're just going to bring this in. We're getting close here. We want to get this around 30K so that we can get pulled in by the atmosphere. Perfect, 35K. You can see this is gonna take 331 Delta V and we have 953 Delta V left. So we should be in good shape. So let's go ahead and warp to our maneuver node. We're gonna line up with our target. And again, we're within the 30 second mark so we can burn pretty well at any point because we're gonna burn a little bit slowly too. So we're going to watch our orbit push out. There we go. We now have an orbit around Kerbin. We're going to right click our periapsis and watch our periapsis get pulled in here. I'm going to slow my burn down. As we try to get within 35k. Okay, I'm going up. We're just going to do short little taps here. All right, 34K, we're in good shape. 34 kilometers up. We can delete our maneuver node and enjoy as we head back to Earth, or to Kerbin, I mean. So we're gonna speed time ahead. We don't have any more maneuver nodes. We're just gonna return to Kerbin and get a nice landing. As we say goodbye to the moon. Oh, we've got more science to, to complete here. If we have more science, let's check in EVA as well. Okay, we get lined up. EVA. Uh, no science here, so let's reboard. We already got what we needed from there. All right, and there's our little glowing blue ball. So let's go ahead and speed time up. We actually don't need our last stage now. Now that we've gotten within uh, 35 kilometers of the atmosphere, we don't need to burn anymore. So we can ditch this stage at any point. I'm gonna speed ahead. As we leave the moon's sphere of influence, let Kerbin fall into us here. came in a little quick so we're gonna detach our stage there we're gonna point retrograde we're gonna come in for a landing we probably should have done another save if I'm being honest we should have done another quick save All right, we're coming in for a landing here. Now we're gonna land using the same thing, around 20 kilometers or about 300 meters per second, 350 meters per second. Those are the magic numbers we're looking for. Now this is why we needed our heat shield, guys. Otherwise our command pod would be taking all of this heat and we'd be heating up pretty significantly again. Gonna let our speed slow down. We're gonna get closer to the ground. As we let ourselves fall in and listen to that epic music. All right, we're at 33 kilometers, 32. Yeah, just under 33 kilometers now. We're still coming in mighty quick, but our speed is slowing down pretty fast. And as we get into thicker atmosphere, we're gonna slow down even faster. 
It's a shame we're coming in at nighttime, so, you know, we can't see as much. But that's okay. We still get those nice flame effects. And hopefully you guys will get to come in during the daytime. Alright, we're at 30.5 kilometers, 1800 meters per second. You can see we're slow are we're getting lower at a slower rate now. And we're getting less flame effect. As we slow down as we drop into the atmosphere. All right, we're still coming in a little bit quick for us to deploy our parachutes yet. So we're going to slow down a little bit more. We, we can afford to get a little bit lower. Alright, we're coming in at 800. 700. Let this count down here. I definitely want to be below 500 meters, meters per second. Looks like we'll be deploying around 10k. Actually, we're at 300. We can deploy now. As our initial shoot comes out and slows our descent even more. We'll descend down. And really, all that's... We're left in the game's hands. Hoping for the best. All right, shoot is fully deployed. Let's come on down for a landing. Looks like we're landing in the water today, guys. Hopefully you land in a different biome and you can collect some more science wherever you land. But that's it. Let's recover our vessel. Head back to the Kerbal Space Center here. And let's take a look at mission control. So we should have two missions complete now. Going green and moon or bust. For going green, we're concerned that some of the goo that gets dumped into the sink of the R&D Center might be messing with the grass. It's too green, right? Take a quick peek and make sure we haven't made this place radioactive. So we attached a Science Junior to a vessel and we performed an environment survey on Kerbin. So we're getting 25 science for that. We get to click the thanks science button. Nice, I have some good news and some less good news. The good news is that our environmental footprint is small. Our recycling is paying off. The less good news is we found traces of radioactivity around the bathrooms. Either radioactive waste is getting flushed or someone needs to see a doctor. We've had another talk with the R&D team about throwing things away in the correctly colored bin. In the meantime, they recommend limiting your hand washing time to the R&D lab to 10 seconds or less. All right, and thanks science. Take our 25 science points here. And then we'll hand in the moon or bust. Time to visit our nearest neighbor, the Mun. Yay, you did it! You did it! As of this moment, we're leading the space race. Yes, ours is the only agency participating, but it's still an achievement. A swarm of reporters has been knocking down our doors. We're talking major press outlets. Space Weekly, the Kerbaler Times, the Kerbaler Astronomer Society newsletter. Heck, even SAS Planet, Planet of SAS. Are you Kerbal? Because those reporters are revolving around you. So instead of having to answer one by one, I just lock them in your office. Don't worry, Newton has found various flat snacks that can be slid under the door to them. Seems like they're making themselves comfortable in there, so no hurry. Meanwhile, we have more important work to do. Getting so near to another celestial body has only whet the agency's appetite for an up-close encounter. It's finally time to land on the moon. When you're ready, go to Mission Control. Mission Control will be waiting for your next mission. Over and out. Alright, we established an orbit around the moon with an apoapsis less than 2400 kilometers and a periapsis greater than 60k. Thanks, science. Look at this, we've got three new missions here. We've got one small step, time to prove the moon is not made of spicy space cheese. We have to land on the surface of the moon. We'll get 300 science for that. 
We have first dibs. Maxo Construction Toys wants to make an action figure of a Kerbal holding a KSC flag. Their creative director, Francois, has said, I won't accept anything short of the real thing. Would you land on a mare, one of the moon's smooth, dark lowlands, and plant a flag? We need reference pictures. So we have a target for where we want to land on the moon. And then we have a perfect circle. Periapsis Rocket Supplies is suing us for using their company name. We explain that every orbit has a periapsis and that it's not copyright infringement. But their lawyers think otherwise. They argue if we can make our orbit a perfect circle, we can just have one big apoapsis and leave the periapsis out of it. Our legal department needs help. Make that circle and tell us what happens. Establish an orbit around Kerbin with an apoapsis and periapsis, each between 99 and 101 kilometers. So we'll get 100 science for this one. Uh, this one is going to be no different than the orbits that we've done before. Uh, so you can use our standard orbital rocket for that one. And uh, it's just going to require some fine-tuning of the maneuver node. So this is definitely a good challenge for you guys to try on your own. Uh, we, of course, will do a video on it, but I think it's going to be a good challenge for you guys. For now, let's take a look at the R&D station. And let's see what new things we can pick up here. So... We can get specialized decoupling, which will give us some better decouplers. I think I'm going to pick that one up. And power launchers. This is going to give us a skipper engine, some methyl a bigger methylox fuel tank, and a small to medium adapter. So this is going to start giving us some of our medium rocket parts. So let's, let's grab power launchers. And that unlocks tier 2 for us. We're not going to grab anything from tier 2 yet, but at this point we might as well finish getting our tier one stuff. So we're gonna use our reaction control systems. Let's use power management to get some bigger solar pro solar panels. And let's grab probes, long range probes. We might as well grab trusses, it's cheap. Same with micro construction, that's pretty cheap here. We're just gonna pick up everything that we can here. And we'll have to choose between docking, monopropellant. Uh, I think I'm going to go basic docking and we'll get the docking port. And we might as well grab miniaturization while we're at it. So all that's left is the monopropellant drive and the tiny engines. We'll definitely get those with our next missions here, uh, which should be a lot of fun. So guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. It was really exciting to go to the moon with you. I hope this video helped you. If you learned something new or liked it, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really does help out. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take it easy, guys, and we'll see you next time.